like attracts like, right? You don't just randomly get amazing people. You have to become the leader that would attract those amazing people. So for those of us that geek out on chiropractic philosophy, that shouldn't be so hard for us to understand when we say life flows through us. It also means that we're going to attract based off of our energy, like Bobby and I have been talking about the person to walk out our vision with us when we're, when we're that leader that can actually attract that type of a person. And that's why we're starting with this conversation first of who do you need to become in order to attract the team that you desire to walk the vision out that you desire. So first and foremost, it's, it's recognizing I need to step into that. I get to be that leader that has probably, um, characteristics that maybe I haven't fully developed yet. Um, and so being mindful of that is the starting place. And we spoke about before today's before today's show, Lena, you and I were talking about how one of the pillars that underpins that as a starting point is this complete dedication to chiropractic and the chiropractic principles and living by the chiropractic principles and you know understanding chiropractic history. Hello, and welcome to Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. This podcast is dedicated to chiropractors who are in the seasons of launching and building their practice. Join myself, Dr. Lona, and my co-host, Dr. Bobby, as we have conversations each week as it relates to building the practice of your dreams. And remember, you can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. We are here to lead you on the way. What's up, team? Welcome back to the Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast with the amazing Dr. Lona Cook and myself, Dr. Bobby Eljasovic. Lona, what's going on? How you doing? Uh, we had a great 4th of July, did some lake time. It was it was nice to have like a slow down weekend, took a nap or two in there. I know you didn't get that. You had a busy weekend, Bobby. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's a couple of weeks. We had uh, back-to-back training immersions, but uh they were amazing. They do it. They're energizing me. And uh, I love to train. You know, last week we spoke about team training and um, part of training also is external to your internal team. So I take my team to all the live immersions uh, because I know that it just energizes and inspires them. And it's no surprise that, you know, these last couple of weeks we've been absolutely cranking. So guys, if you want an injection into your practice, get registered for our next uh, immersions or intensives, depending on where you're located. And the next ones later in the year, are everybody's favorite topic which is how do I get more new patients? Yes. So good. Bobby, I love that you just said you brought, you always bring your team to all the events and, you know, we're going to talk about leadership today and we were talking about training last week and, you know, we really didn't talk about that. I was like, yes, take your team to train other places, to get dipped in philosophy, to train on technique, to go to TRP's immersions and get training on all the systems. Like it's a no brainer to spend that money because it's going to come back in dividends and what the practice can produce through your people being more well-trained. But Lona, what if I invest in my team and I train them and I spend all this money and then they end up leaving me? Yeah, it happens. And you'll get someone even better. Yeah, 100%. And guess what? What if you don't spend money, invest in them and they stay? <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> okay. So if you're in business and if you have team guidance, okay, if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur and you're listening to this and you have team, okay, people are investments. And just like any investment, if you put energy into an investment, it's going to pay back, okay? You're going to ROI your investment and you're going to multiply that ROI. If you don't put energy into it, what happens in something you don't put energy in, Lana? It dwindles and dies. Exactly. And that goes for anything in life, guys. Energy is everything. So today is a continuation from last week. And I'm excited about this topic. It doesn't have to be a long one, but it's a very powerful one. Okay. Um, and so what we want to talk about today is, you know, often chiropractors say, hey, how do I attract awesome people? So I'm hiring my first CA lamb, or I'm hiring my 10th CA, or I'm hiring my 20th CA. Okay. And, you know, how do I hire great people? Like I've had bad experience with this. I've had associates in the past that were bad or I've had CAs in the past that were bad. How do I hire A players is what they're asking us, right? Mm -hmm. However, before you hire an A player, there's a question that you really need to ask yourself. And that question that you need to ask yourself first is how do I become an A player? 
Now, you might think you're already in a play. Oh, well, I just want someone like me. Look, I'm working, you know, 18 hours a day. And okay, this doesn't mean that you're necessarily an A player. It's because your volume of hours that you're doing. Um, in fact, there's attributes of world-class leaders. And if you want to attract A players, you've got to be a world-class leader because A players want to work for or with a world-class leader, right? Something to aspire to. Um, so there's principles that lead to you becoming an A uh, an A-class player, okay, a world-class leader that can actually attract the top talent. Um, and so why don't you take us through this, Lena? What are the principles now? How can I, as a business owner, up my game in becoming an A player or let's call it an A-plus player or if you feel as though you're an A-plus, how do I become an A-plus-plus player so that I can continue to attract higher quality people in some office? Where's a good starting point for this that you want to kick off? Yeah, I'd love to. You know, this is one of my favorite things to kind of like get nerdy about chiropractic philosophy here. But we tell people that life flows above, down, inside out. And yet we forget that when we apply it sometimes to our business and our team, right? So our team is really an extension of ourselves. And I was actually in a strategy call earlier today with a really wonderful chiropractor. And you could just see how much she just loves her team. Like just, and so she's singing their praises and she's like, I have just been so blessed with the most amazing team. And she's like, you know, singing all the good things about them. And I stopped her for a second. I was like, you do realize that they are an extension also of you. You're an amazing leader. You've attracted them, you know? And so it's like, like attracts like, right? You don't just randomly get amazing people. You have to become the leader that would attract those amazing people. So for those of us that geek out on chiropractic philosophy, that shouldn't be so hard for us to understand when we say life flows through us. It also means that we're going to attract based off of our energy, like Bobby and I have been talking about the person to walk out our vision with us when we're, when we're that leader that can actually attract that type of a person. And that's why we're starting with this conversation first of who do you need to become in order to attract the team that you desire to walk the vision out that you desire. So first and foremost, it's, it's recognizing I need to step into that. I get to be that leader that has probably, um, characteristics that maybe I haven't fully developed yet. Um, and so being mindful of that is the starting place. And we spoke about before today's, before today's show, Lena, you and I were talking about how one of the pillars that underpins that as a starting point is this complete dedication to chiropractic and the chiropractic principles and living by the chiropractic principles and, you know, understanding chiropractic history, the chiropractic lifestyle, um, do you want to talk? Do you want to talk us through that in a little bit more detail? So, as a starting point, you know, we feel as a as a leader, you've got to have a utmost complete dedication to what you do in chiropractic. Do you want to unpack that a little bit for us? What we mean by that? Yeah, I'd love to. You know, Bobby, you said the word obsession when we were talking about it before, and I would agree with you. And and for some people, that may seem like an odd word to choose for this, but you know, to to do the things that's going to require you to do to build the practice of your dreams and serve people. You you do have to develop this obsession with chiropractic and what it can provide for humanity and really also understanding, you know, the depth of chiropractic, which most of us do not receive in school. So this is something you're actively going to need to participate in most likely either during school, if you're listening to this and you're still a student, or maybe you're already out in practice. And I remember for myself, as I was trying to grow my practice, one of my mentors said to me, you need to go get dipped. You need to be, you know, if you squeeze an orange, what comes out? It should be orange juice. You know, if you squeeze a chiropractor, chiropractic should come out, right? And I didn't have that yet. I hadn't been exposed to it. So I went on like an obsession, if you will, a, a, an obsessive campaign to like learn from people who could teach me chiropractic. I did things like the ACP um, to just get dipped into more of like where we began in chiropractic and to really start to understand what this craft was that I was embarking on that I already had a DC after my name, but I didn't, I didn't have the depth to my understanding yet. Yeah. How about you, Bob? Yeah. And you know what, I'm going to say, it and I'll be just raw, completely raw and authentic. Um, you need to be obsessed <laughs> I'm going to use the word. I'm completely fine with using it. Okay. You need to be, as some people say, healthy obsession for healthy bullshit, right? You need to have this obsession. And you know what? At the end of the day, is that not what life is about? Finding things that you're obsessively passionate about and completely dedicating yourself to making that better. And as a result of that, making the world a better place. Mm. And 
So true. I, I look at everything that I do and I'm like, I don't want to do anything half-assed. I don't want to sit on fences anywhere. Whether that comes to chiropractic, whether that comes to uh, relationships, whether that comes to health and fitness, that whether that comes to being a dad, whether that comes to, you know, anything. I don't want to do anything hard. I don't want to be the average. Is it, is it? Look, Lena, would you like to be an average mom? No. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, do you want to be the average wife? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I want to be like world-class, the best dad, right? World-class, the best husband, world-class, the best chiropractor. And I know that the only way to do that is by not letting life happen by chance and mm -hmm. it's by putting conscious intention into everything. So mm -hmm. I'm proud to admit that I'm obsessed with chiropractic. I'm obsessed with business. And let's just talk about chiropractic specific because I love what Dr. Francis says about this. And um, I run myself this of this regularly. He goes, when you have a team and you have... Um, people that are following you, okay? And you're a leader inside of your office. Doesn't matter if you have one team member, right? Or you have many team members. You can be, you can have one of three relationships to those team members. Uh, you can be their boss and boss is like, do this, do that. Okay, make sure this is done. Make sure that is done, all right? As a boss, you're going to let them down sometimes because you sometimes won't get things done. That's being human, all right? No one likes doing my boss, my boss. Um, second option is you can be their friend. There's a lot of people that manage by being their friend. It's like, oh, I'm going to be a friend. Oh, yeah, great. And that also has its downfalls, okay? Because if we're going to be friends, someone else should manage you and let's go out to the pub and have a drink. We'll be friends, right? We'll have beers regularly. Um, and the third kind of relationship that you get to choose to have with your team is you can be their doctor. And I like that third relationship of being their doctor because doctor implies the person has respect for my knowledge, my understanding, and you're their doctor. You speak into them, you educate them, you help lead them. And as a result, if they feel that, then then they're going to come alongside you with the journey. So I look at the only way someone's going to look at me as their doctor is if I have, you know, a complete level of understanding around exactly what it is that we do in our office. So I love what um, one of our good mutual friends and uh, mentors Dr. Patrick Chintempo said about this. I remember listening to a talk that he was doing. We have a private group and um, he was speaking at um, in Las Vegas a few years ago. And his the talk of his topic, this wasn't a public like big talk. Like I've only, only heard him do this to our little private group of about 50, 60 people. And the topic of his talk was um, that in order for you to truly understand chiropractic, you've got to understand the history and the philosophy of chiropractic. You know, there's plenty of people that are like, oh, they're into chiropractic. Sid Williams used to say this, I'm into chiropractic, I'm into chiropractic. But there's a very profound and significant difference between being into chiropractic and chiropractic being in you. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I was like, it's not enough to be into it. I'm into many things, you know. I'm into cool sneakers, Lena. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm into fast cars, okay. But, you know, like those things come and go. It's whatever, like. But the thing is, like, the thing that's in me is chiropractic. And so I had to go through a process where I really truly understood the history of chiropractic, the philosophy of chiropractic. Um, it's philosophy you've heard of many times, but the history is one people don't often hear about. I had to really understand the history because if you truly understand the history of what we've been through to get where we are today and what the chiropractic profession has endured and it continues to grow um, and thrive, with the right mindset around it, uh, mm -hmm. you can't help become, but, but become obsessed with what's going on. Okay. Oh, so, mm -hmm. so lesson number one, go back and look at the history. Like look at the starting point, look at the struggle years, look at the fight years, okay? You know, look at the years after the fight. Look at the current fight years. You're in a fight right now, okay? Um, look at those years. You can either look at that fight and shy away from it or you can look at that and go, I'm in, let's rock and roll. Okay. And Bobby, a resource, if anyone's listening, of like, where do I look at that, right? Go to Simon Sensen's work, the white books he has, where he like makes some of the green books more accessible. He goes, I geeked out on like the history of chiropractic, his books that were BJ Palmer and Dee Dee's Palmer's spiritual writings. Like, oh, it's so deep. It's like, man, they were so ahead of their time. It's just amazing. Right. And yeah. you listen to that and you're like, D.D. Palmer was talking about quantum physics before there was even a term. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. And you know what I realized, Lana? I realized, yeah, in today's world, people look for like, oh, new sexy things. Like what's the silver shiny bullet? Chiropractic in its actual purest form, communicated properly, is the freaking sexy thing. Mm. I had written down here, shiny objects. Like how many chiros like 
want to grow their practice, quote unquote, but are unwilling to take the adjustment more seriously and this work in chiropractic more seriously and be the leader that communicates actual chiropractic that will grow their practice instead of like the next shiny thing that they think it's going to be the like solution. Um, yeah, it's following mind. So I want to share with you um, an example of this. So in my office, you guys probably know, you know we're a pure chiropractic office. So um, everything is centered around the chiropractic adjustment, right? It's about analyzing the spine, removing interference in the nervous system, optimizing people's health expression through an optimal functioning spine, okay? We don't shy away from that. We communicate. Uh, we lead from the front with that, with our marketing, with our table talk, um, with everything through the office. And so recently, we uh, we employed a radiographer full-time in our office. So we've got a professional radiographer. So he does all of our x-rays. So he does our entire x-ray protocol, re-x-ray protocol. Um, he's been a rock star. But it was very interesting experience because this is the first time hiring someone that's more medical paradigm. So he's worked in a radiography office, okay, inside a medical office, like multiple ones his whole life. Um, and so when he started, my whole team was like, oh, Rich, now everyone loves him, right? He's like, Rich, he's just... He balances out our energies very, very well. He's a little bit more probably in his 60s, early 60s, um, amazing radiographer, very much, um, let's call it an allopathic-like mindset, but has appreciation and respect for chiropractic, but, th but thought it was primarily for like back pain, you know? Um, and then yesterday, I just read out this email. So he sends this email to, to my wife. So my wife's inside of our practice as well. Um, and this is what he wrote. He wrote, um, so he's just sorting out a few things around like um, a couple of things around his um, paperwork, right? And he writes, one thing I wanted to mention, yeah, Dr. Yala, is this practice is very, in inverted commas, out of the box. In other yeah. words, like no other other that I've ever previously worked in or seen in my life. It is amazingly efficient, super professional, and above all else, friendly. Obviously, I made passing comments at home and my wife, ever critical in inverted commas, and also a health professional, I'm not sure yet what kind of health professional, says to me yesterday, wow, Richard, this practice sounds cutting edge, okay? And he said, yes, it is. Very mm -hmm. impressive, okay? Then he goes on to say in the email, um, he goes, um, I, uh, so uh, we have some friends who are health professionals, one in particular, very well connected and will be interested in a care plan. <laughs> Might be skeptical, okay, but I'd love to give them a heads up before I send them in. So you're going to send someone in practice, obviously, it's very allopathic, some kind of medical doctor, which I love, okay. Um, but I look at that and I go, okay, what is it that causes someone to communicate like that? And I would say that above all else, it's our dedication and understanding of chiropractic, the philosophy, the history, and then the way that we communicate that um, in a cutting edge, like Richard, as you can see himself says there, um, in a sexy and modern and amazing way. <laughs> mm, I love it. You should be so proud of that too. Um, that takes an immense amount of intention to get to the point where you've hired someone like that, that also can come in and give a, comp a compliment like that. So that's amazing. Someone that's allopathic minded, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so you know, the title of the podcast line is how do you become an A player? So step number one, we said dedication to chiropractic, understanding the history and the philosophy. Um, what else? I know you were talking to me before about, all right, well, you've got to lead by example and talk the talk and all that by the sense of your life. But what, what else do you want to unpack for us? How do I become an yeah. A player? You know, I think the truth is too, like you think about, whose name is on the line, it, it, it's you, right? Like at first, especially when you're a team of one and you're working on becoming that leader that's going to attract the team is like, have I put the work in so that other people who are going to want to work hard on this same vision are going to see me as an example here, right? Like, do I actually like pound the pavement and do the thing so that I have the street cred? Like a lot of people want a thing, but aren't willing to go through the action. Now I'm not here to say that it has to all be hard work all the time with no fun. No, it can, it can be fun too. But there are a lot of times where you are doing a lot of things that have that's disguised as hard work, right? It's like, I'm doing the mental work to get things in place. I'm doing the mental work to understand chiropractic better. I'm doing the like sometimes late nights to make sure things are in order. That doesn't mean that's a season forever, but there is a season of that. We were just having this conversation with someone that was launching a practice. So it was like, it's a sprint at first. And eventually you then prepare for the marathon where you realize I can't sustain this pace forever. Right. And that's why I need a team and I need to get better at that. But part of you being, being that leader is being birthed through these challenging things of like, I got to get better. I got to work more effectively. 
I did that season. I have the street cred there. I can't shortcut that because I actually learned a lot of things through that season. And now I can wear that as a patch on my chest to help other people go through that season too, right? Um, so just know that like your leadership is also birthed through you walking through these seasons. Oh, okay. I love that because you spoke what's on my mind, what's on my heart, because I've got a note here in front of me that says, you ready? Short, but simple lead by example. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> if I always say to my, to my associates, if you're going to be advising somebody on health, you better be freaking healthy. Right. If you're going to be advising somebody on natural health, you better be looking after your body naturally. Now, here's the beautiful thing about chiropractic, that the actual principles of chiropractic work <laughs> um, if you follow them. So mm -hmm. if you regularly get checked and adjusted, you're going to be healthier. If you combine that with a chiropractic lifestyle and if you regularly look after your health in a natural way, if you're eating well, if you're resting well, if you're exercising and moving well, if you're looking after your body in the natural requirements that it needs to be healthy, you will be healthy. And you know what I've noticed, Lana? What? Healthy is the new sexy, okay? When somebody is healthy, it's just freaking hot. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And I, I see this in like, so I'm 37 years old, okay? So I see this in my group of friends, okay? You're kind of in that like late 30s now where you see, okay, people's health decisions are starting to stack up. Mm -hmm. And so you see guys, right? The typical kind of, all right, a lot of the guys are starting to get the dad bods. They're starting to get like the bee bellies. They're starting to get a little bit lower in their energy. They're starting to get a little bit slower in their movements. They're getting a little bit more restricted in their function. They're mm -hmm. getting a little bit more overwhelmed with like, oh, life and family and work and, you know, the mental side of things. And often I get friends that like, kind of look up to me and are like, how do you do it? And, um, the, and they see it, they're like, all right, there's multiple businesses, there's lots of stuff going on, there's all this travel. And the core of all of it is health um, and our health routines inside and energy, our house. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, health and energy. And all our core routines around our house when it comes to like health and energy are centered around chiropractic. Um, you know, we're getting adjusted regularly. We're getting our spines assessed. We take core scores on ourselves and x-ray ourselves, right? And I just know that it's a magical formula and because I'm so committed at what it does for us, then I can't help but be excited and communicate that into everybody else, including my team, which is how you lead like an A player. Mm, so good. Yeah. You got to walk your talk. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. So a couple of things that we've just said now. So just to recap, we said, number one, you got to have a complete dedication to chiropractic. Go back and understand the philosophy. Lona gave some great, great resources around the philosophy and the history of chiropractic. Number two, we said, you got to lead by example. So you got to be your team's doctor and then in turn, you can lead by example. If we were to say one more thing, Lona, that I can take away from this, all right, that really kind of is going to level up my game as being a leader and being an A player so I can attract these people. Um, what would the final thing that you be that you add? And before you answer this, I just want to say this to everyone. You ready, guys? Let me ask you this question. Do you feel as though you would love to have someone on your team that's dedicated to chiropractic, that's obsessed with getting better outcomes for people, that's obsessed uh, with like chiropractic and what it's been through and the principles and the philosophy and the history? Would you love to have someone on your team that leads by example, that's healthy themselves, that's an expression of energy, that's an expression of health? If you answered yes to any of those two, then you bloody better be those things. And I'll just drop mm -hmm. the microphone. Mm -hmm. So true. What's the third and final one? The third thing I would say is like, you're the leader. The leader gets to carry a vision and you got to spend time with your vision, right? So people are attracted to leaders with vision. And many times we we don't do the work to keep working and cultivating the vision, right? So when Bobby said like he's gassed up or he's like super excited about chiropractic 15 years in or 13 years in, myself included in that, it's like, I'm willing to do the next level of what leadership is going to require from me, both the like scar tissue and the, the like joyful parts of it, because I have vision for what this can step into. And that's how I'm going to attract team who also wants to grow in their leadership and what they can shoulder so that we can go further together. Right. So, you know, sometimes vision is something that we maybe wrote down at one point and we don't revisit it, but for you to really become a like a class, a world-class leader is going to require you to realize that that is the one thing you bring to the team that likely is not going to be replaced by the other people. They're going to co-create it with you, 
but you're going to spearhead that. So um, time with your vision. Yeah, absolutely. As someone who owns the business, you fall into the seat of being the CEO. Um, CEO is the chief energizing officer. And one of the most powerful ways to energize people around you, including yourself, is through a powerful and compelling and clear vision. Okay. Um, in fact, I heard a quote once, which I thought was brilliant, that um, people will stick with you. And I'll probably butcher the quote, but it was something along the line. People will stick with you if the vision that you hold for them is even greater than the vision that they hold for themselves. Mm. So if I had a conversation with you right now, let's say you reached out, a lot of people do on the back of podcasts, I'm like, I'm going to talk about my practice, Bob. Here's where I'm at. I'm stuck on this level. I'm stuck on this level. And I ask you, I'm like, well, what do you want to be? What does success look like for you? And you paint out a vision. And then if I expand that vision for you even further, and I'm like, oh, learn. okay, cool. That's a great starting point. Okay. Mm-hmm. Have you ever considered this and this and that and this, right? And open up blind spots for you. Okay. And you're like, oh my goodness, no, I haven't. But that freaking sounds awesome. Okay. Um, I become someone in your life that's an energizer. I become someone in your life that is great to spend time with because I hold a vision for you greater than what you even hold for yourself. Yes. And so that's one thing that you only get if you spend conscious time carving that out. So I love that you said there, all right, you know, do you spend regular time carving out your vision story? And I say that you should have crystal clear clarity 12 months from now. So what do you want the office to look like 12 months from now? You should have somewhat clarity three years from now. And I'm going to take this one step further and say, the people who I see in my journey that are the most successful, not just in chiropractic, but also in life, they are the same ones that can carve out clarity of vision even further. So if someone has a five-year clear vision story, a 10-year clear vision story, a 15-year clear vision story, you can tell that they put conscious time and intention to this and conscious time and intention is what gets results. That's where it always starts. Mm. so good Bobby and that should be fun right have fun with thinking about it It doesn't mean it's going to go exactly what you have down on paper it means like you're you're being intentional to even start to like most people don't know what they're eating tomorrow right so like to spend time thinking that far out is is a high level thought yeah and condition your nervous system because I've heard this said I don't know if it's true or not but you know when you're imagining something and you're like close your eyes and you're dreaming about something you're doing casting your nervous system doesn't actually know whether that's actually happened again or whether it has. This is why if you reflect back on the time in your life that you were really happy, really positive, and you spend a minute just bringing it to your thoughts and close your eyes and feel it and see it, you know, when you open your eyes, you feel it again. You're like, oh, that was freaking amazing. You put your nervous system in that state, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, you can do the opposite too. But I love this analogy because I think this speaks into this perfectly. Learner. Your mind, our mind, my mind, um, is like the most fertile bit of soil that you'll ever experience and encounter in your life. Whatever you plant in there, it's going to grow. Okay. However, if you choose to plant nothing in there, what's going to grow? Nothing. Or weeds, <laughs> right? Weeds grow in there, nothing and weeds. And if weeds grow in there, these are the things that you don't want. So if you just leave things to chance, weeds grow in there. But how do you plant things that will actually like you'll be able to harvest? It's amazing. It's by putting conscious intention to what it is that you want to harvest and rule out the time. So Lona said there, you know, um, vision casting, you want to rule out the time regularly. And, you know, if you just had a shift where you got beaten up, if you just had a week where you got beaten up, just pause for a moment and reflect. And that's part of the journey. That's not the destination. It's just part of the journey. But reflect back on okay where it is exactly that you want to be 12 months from now and you'll quickly change those emotions and be back on point right because ready to rock and roll again that's great bobby you know some of you need to hear this too that like just because you maybe have not had success in leading well in your office doesn't mean that that is what you're destined for but it is going to require you to break the habit of being yourself which is also one of joe dispenza's a chiropractor's books um, and there's so many good things out there that you can access through podcasts, as well as books like Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, um, to help you start to see how you can step into a different persona. And that persona is going to have a different energetic grid that gets different results with people, whether that's leading patients or leading team members or leading yourself. Start there first, right? Um, So just know that like your history can just stay in the past and you can start to make changes moving forward. 100%. 100%. Letting go to rise, starting with a clean slate. So there you have it, team. How do you become an A player? Well, if you want to attract players, you've got to become an A player. 
So watch this. Would you like to attract someone into your office that's dedicated to chiropractic, that loves it, has a help, that has an obsession with it? Would you like to attract someone that leads by example, is a billboard for chiropractic, gets adjusted regularly, looks after their body in a holistic, nice, natural way? Would you like to attract someone in your office that's vision casting and comes to you with ideas and, Lona, I have this idea about the office. Why don't we start doing this? And let's do this, okay? And if you answered yes to any of those or all three, I'm going to tell you this you first need to be doing that regularly okay? and you'll attract an A class version of yourself. And then you'll attract a class people inside of your office too. So good, Bobby. Thank you so much for today. Love it. All right, team. We had a blast today. As you can tell, Lana and I love doing these podcasts. So you guys are awesome. Uh, please. One of the ways that you can help us is give us a five star podcast review. We love your podcast reviews. And we love your feedback as well. So it really helps us a lot getting this out to more people. The podcast is growing a lot. There's a lot of cool engagement coming, a lot of cool feedback coming. So we love doing it, guys. We love doing it even more when you give us five-star reviews. So give us five-star review, and we're going to keep fueling you guys with nuggets. And, of course, if there's any specific things that you want us to um, cover, um, please reach out to either Dr. Lona or myself, and we'll make sure that we'll go there as well. Lona, thank you so much. We appreciate your time, lady, and we'll catch you really soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic, and what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like the podcast, please subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, please click the links in the show notes to schedule a call.